Hello everyone, my name is Hisham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics where we make the riveting and dimpling systems. Uh, I would like to apologize, it's been quite some time since I put out a video. Uh, it's because we got really really busy so anyhow. <laughs> the reason for this video is because I've had a lot of questions uh, from fellow pilots and, and builders that indicates to me that there is a, a lot of people that misunderstand some things about riveting and this is essentially what you're doing is you're riveting this airplane together that's the main component is the airframe then you attach everything to that so that is the most important thing right now to you so we need to have a clear understanding and maybe a little bit of background about riveting so we can proceed with building our airplanes uh, comfortably and uh, with knowledge. The basic principle of riveting is written in the manuals and that this manual right here was my airframe manual during my AMP course at Greenville Technical College. It's made by Jepson and it's of course very detailed but I will tell you the part that you need to know as an aircraft builder is here in the vans manual so I am not going to refer to this manual because you might not have it so we we'll talk from vans manual in vans manual chapter 5 page 4 it sums it up to you in the fourth paragraph here which basically tells you uh, how a designer pick certain length rivet to go in a certain place luckily we don't have to do that most of the time what about two or three red lines under most of the time and we'll find out why later on so the engineer picked the size of the rivet let's say it's a, a four number four rivet or number three rivet he already decided on the diameter of the rivet and he already decided on the length so it's a three dash three or as three dash three and a half they already made that decision and they send you the kit and they sent you the rivets so we are gonna deal with this situation now from that standpoint is that you have a kit and you have the rivet and you just have to rivet that squeeze that rivet and create that shop head that's going to hold these parts together as a review in the manual it says the part that's sticking out from the material that need to be squeezed is usually one and a half times the diameter in length so if the diameter is 0 0.094 the part that's sticking out is one and a half times that so I have to create a shop head and also this shop head 
after I squeeze it, it have to be in diameter, one and a half times the diameter, and in height, half the diameter. So the numbers are colliding here, and it gets confusing, but you need, you need to kind of take a deep breath and keep that in mind and digest that point. One and a half and half plays a big role in that equation. Now, before we continue into this subject, we need to understand what happens when you squeeze a rivet. We will assume this is the shank of the rivet, and you're going to squeeze it from here. This rivet is sitting in a hole. When you squeeze it, the whole thing gets bigger in diameter. It expands in the diameter part of it and it gets shorter in length. Even the part that's inside the hole. Till that material that's expanding meets the wall of the the skin from the inside of the wall of the hole and that stops it from expanding right there then the rest of the stem gets larger here and creates the shop head so when you compress the stem the whole thing expands till it reaches the diameter of the hole and that portion stops expanding and the part that's sticking out continues to expand to create the shop head. And now in the case of a rivet like this one which is a three dash three and a half when you squeeze it, the shank expands to meet the wall, which is supposed to be 0 0.098, which is the number 40 drill. At that point, the pressure from the hole in the material holds the shank at that diameter and the part that's taken out starts expanding. Now, if this hole is not 0 0.098 anymore, and let's say it is 0 0.105, means bigger than normal. That means that as you compressing, the whole thing gets shorter till the diameter of the rivet reaches the point one zero five first, then you start to expand the part where it creates the shop head, which consume some of the material that is sticking out because you're filling in the hole right here because the hole is bigger then the diameter is supposed to be, which is 0 0.098. And that's the drill size, the number 40 drill. Which brings us to a very important point that I want to make that, and I have seen, I have seen a gentleman, I have seen two kinds of people. One, is using that tool which is called Easy Burr. And that tool is supposed to chamfer when you're going in, cross over to the other side, when you're going out, it chamfers the back side. So he found that to be really easy because you put it in a drill and you go chamfer this side and when you push it on the other side, then pull it back, it chamfers the other side so he doesn't have 
to go to the other side in a separate operation. This tool, it keeps cutting as it's turning going through the hole. So if your hole is 0 0.098 by the time it cross to the other side of the skin now it took let's say only took a thousand off of the wall so that means that the diameter of the hole now is 0 0.100 then on the way back when he pulls it out let's say it will only take a couple of more thousands so now you are at point zero excuse me point one zero two uh, now the hole is four thousands bigger than I wanted to begin with so this have to be filled with material when I'm compressing that rivet. That is not good at all. So that was the first person. He's very happy that he doesn't have to deburr from both sides in separate operations. The second person is the smart guy. After he done that on a surface, uh, let's say it is the vertical stabilizer, it's his first time, and he was just going through it, deburring and all that stuff. Then he dimples it. Now, dimpling itself enlarged the holes. And guys, you need to get some scrap piece of metal, some scrap aluminum that's about 20 thousand thick or 25 or whatever, and drill a hole in it and measure the hole. So let's say you drill a number 40 hole. When you measure it, a lot of times it's a little bigger than number 40. So deburr it very lightly and very carefully then take it and dimple it then measure the hole again you're going to find out that this hole now is about 0 0.107 or 0 0.106 it will be huge huge when you compare it to the 0 0.098 that it's supposed to be now, folks, bear in mind that this rivet diameter is 0 0.094. That does not change. It's 330 seconds. Okay? It's 0 0.093 and a half. You got the point. So, what happened is that he was, this gentleman was using that easy bird tool so he made the hole much bigger then he dimpled it then he tried to click the parts together and the clicos wouldn't hold the material it will he just set it in and it just falls right out because the hole now is so big after dimpling it's not even holding the clicos so he got on Vans Air Force to ask people what to do. And I really don't want to discuss what to do in this case because I am no authority on that. If it was up to me, throw away the skin, buy a new one, and don't do this again. Because his skin, from what I recall, and I, I really don't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was like 0.113 or 0.114. It was just a huge hole. Now imagine this gentleman 
try a rivet it with this rivet the number three rivet how is he gonna do that even with the hole being so big how are you gonna create a shop head big enough to hold these two pieces together I mean can you can you imagine that and just going in and flying it at 200 miles an hour folks please be careful with these things this is this is very critical um, and the part that you are working on right now if you're watching this video you're probably working on the empennage now let me give you a little bit of idea how critical this is have you guys heard about rocket airplanes that they make out of uh, I think it's like RV6 they modify it and put a like a 300 horsepower engine and they go really fast with it I guess it's like 230 miles an hour or 240 miles an hour some people out there have, I, I've seen one that put a turbine engine on it to do this and you can look it up they have to beef up the tail why because there is a lot of stress in that area of the airplane the tail is very thin and you're going very fast to go faster you have to make it stronger so I think in that rocket conversion um, and you can google that and read a little bit about it it's very interesting really I do not recommend to veer from fast design fast design it is really good going 30, not 30, 30 miles an hour faster which actually not it's just it's like they go like 20 miles an hour faster if you if you are an airline pilot like me you probably know that 20 knots don't make a hill of beans when it comes to like a even a an hour and a half two hours of flying if you're doing 20 miles an hour faster it really doesn't mean anything okay uh, for the thrill some of these guys are, are going out there and making videos out in the mountains and stuff like that flying really fast uh, or low flying out in the desert uh, around Arizona or something like that it's fun yes I understand but uh, the strength of the tail of the airplane is really important because there's vibration and stuff like that over there that area so you have to be really careful so when you drill a hole and use that tool that easy burr you're really ruining the the hole to begin with and your rivet will be swimming inside i'm sorry i took so long at, at explaining that and and as a matter of fact this video is going to be a long video and it's only made for the people that really cares and don't know what I'm talking about so if you know what you're talking about you uh, if you know what what I'm talking about you don't need to watch the rest of this video guys but for those of you that is inexperienced and they're doing this for the first time you might want to stick around and and kind of concentrate uh, with the, get you a cup of coffee <laughs> and concentrate with me a little bit so we can get to the very important points that you need to keep in mind throughout your build and believe it or not you're going to keep these things in mind throughout building the vertical stabilizer then the rudder then after that it comes naturally you know what's happening you know what's going on you're not going to worry about it it's just the that initial uh, bunch of knowledge that you need to have so 
uh, having said that, I think I made my point. That easy burr tool have no place in my shop. It will not touch my airplane. In the machine shop portion of this facility, I could use one working on some steel to make it a little easier for me, but you won't find it in this section here where we're building the airplane. So now the engineers decided on a certain size rivet and certain length and our job is to squeeze it and get a shop head that's one and a half times the diameter with half the diameter in height. These are supposed to be the minimums. So if the rivet is longer in, long enough you will be able to get a diameter that's a little bigger than one and a half times the diameter of the rivet and a shop head height a little bit more than half the diameter. So we will assume that we're working with a three and a half uh, rivet, a three dash three and a half. If you measure the rivet itself, it's supposed to be 0.218. So now I need to squeeze that rivet. How do I set up my squeeze? So let's assume that it, this is the correct rivet. And I'm, I'm doing this so you can imagine what you're doing, not as a common practice that you, you do every time you set it up. It's just so you can understand what is happening here. Now I'm going to put that rivet on my squeezer like so. And I'm going to push the trigger. If you can see close enough, you will see a gap. I haven't been able to squeeze the rivet because it's the pin of the squeezer is not going far enough. So I am going to turn that knob or that pin till it doesn't turn anymore while I'm squeezing. Now it's touching. Okay? Now. I pushed it, it is the length of the rivet, and it's not going to squeeze. How far do I want to move the pin out of the squeezer so next time I pull this trigger, it squeezes it to the right length. Now, the thread inside this squeezer here is 32 threads per inch. That means that every time I turn that pin it goes in or out one thirty second of an inch. So I need that pin to extend a little bit longer. But by how much? The, the numbers that they tell us scientifically here in, in this book right here, that the shop head 
is going to be half of the diameter but to begin with it was one and a half times the diameter that means I want this to go up till only half of the diameter left so I need to move up the full length of one diameter now the diameter of this rivet is 330 seconds which is let's say 0 0.094 three turns so now if I push this up and I have a mark on the flat here I am going to turn it three times this is one this is two this is three so now when I put this on the rivet and push the trigger it should squeeze it to the correct diameter and height of the shop head one more part of the equation that is missing which is the flex on the yoke itself when you push it the yoke will flex and you can actually see it in this one so how much does it flex we don't know so what happened is as an initial setup I would do what I just did I would have a rivet and I would put it and turn till it stops then I would turn my pin to close it up with the diameter of the rivet whether it's a number four or a number three it's the same thing so I closed it up and my first rivet I will squeeze it it's not going to give me the correct chop head because of the flex here then I use my caliper and check the diameter of the head now what size is the head is supposed to be we said it's one and a half times the diameter now the diameter of the rivet roughly 0 0.094 multiply that by 1.5 that gives us 0.141 now if I check this rivet the rivet head the sharp head and it is 0.136 so it's not big enough now of course if you use the gauge you're not gonna know how much it is so you can just guesstimate it then I guess keep on turning the pin till you the gauge doesn't go on there anymore which I really do not recommend so but I need the head now to be bigger by five thousands so I know one full turn of this changes the distance it travels by point zero three one let's say just to make it an easy number point zero three I need to move it five thousand so I need to make a sixth of a turn one sixth of a turn and it should squeeze it in the correct amount now bear in mind that the harder you squeeze the more flex that's gonna happen here so most likely you're not gonna be one-sixth of a turn that achieves 
your goal at this point is probably one-fifth. So, at this point, you're going to, let's say, if you make it a, just a little less than quarter of a turn, you'll probably get where you need to be as far as the shop had diameter and height so again very important this pin every revolution pulls it in and out roughly 30,000 when you check it with the caliper you'll be able to see how much you need to uh, adjust it with I'd start with the low end and I would use uh, a rivet just like I did to measure how far I can go initially you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to go too far because if you go to it you cannot unsqueeze the rivet but if you under squeeze it you can turn it in and squeeze some more and then some more and some more till you get it right but if you have it too much you can't you have to drill it out so this is the safe and easy way to do it and believe me this sounds a bit difficult at the beginning but if you do this just a few times you're gonna get used to it and folks when you are using our machine to rivet the number three rivets it is the same exact way except you're using the pin in the bottom the coarse thread it's half 13 so you kind of initially adjust that somewhere close then use the pin on the squeezer itself to do the fine tuning to how much you want to squeeze the rivet after that now the question comes up is there ever a time that Van would tell us use this size rivet in this spot and it's not the correct one? It is not so much that it's not correct. When they decided or the engineer decided he's going to use the rivet that long I think it is designed with the material not primed or with very very thin primer or something but there is so far there is only one occasion where I had to go up a size on a rivet and it was on my rudder on the bottom of the rudder where there is actually three pieces of material that is riveted together and all of them were primed and it called for three and a half rivet a three dash three and a half rivet and that rivet after all this primer in between all these three parts was not long enough and sure enough I squeezed it and the head was very long and very skinny on the diameter so I had to drill that out and install a 3-4 rivet and it worked out beautiful so your job as an experimental aircraft builder is to monitor these things it's not because an engineer said use this rivet it is etched in stone no you have to deal with the airplane as you build it as necessary if you see that this rivet is not long enough you need to go up a size or something because you're not going to achieve the, the shop heads height or the diameter now if it's the other way around and the rivet is too long which I have not seen that would be a little bit odd I don't 
I don't see that. So you have to be careful as far as the length is concerned when you squeeze a rivet and you are not getting the diameter and the height of the shop head both of them you cannot achieve that now the length is wrong either I either picked up the wrong size rivet and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing or just like that case in the rudder where the primer is in the way and added to the thickness of three layers and so forth and, and, and I had to go a size higher and uh, I've read some stuff on uh, Vans Air Force where people are were complaining that certain uh, rivets was not long enough and these were old posts but when I reviewed what they said to my manual I found out that my manual was corrected to a longer rivet because sure enough that rivet wasn't long enough back then so they had to supply us with new rivet and corrected the manual and, and everything is hunky dory now to a question that was uh, asked when I was building this section right here this is my horizontal stabilizer where in one of the videos I was squeezing a 4-4 rivet and I can tell you right now this is on page 8-9 if you look on that print it will tell you it's a an AN470AD4-4 rivet typical that means all of the rivets that's going and holding this section here are 4-4 now when you get to that point you're gonna see that this 4-4 rivet here is holding two thin pieces together then here is holding one thick piece and one thin piece and it's the same rivet and honestly I squeezed the rivets and I barely barely got the diameter and the height out of that shop head so that means if I squeezed it a little bit more and got the diameter just a little bit bigger that means the height is not going to be tall enough on that shop head so you have to be careful when you do that you, you're gonna think about it a little bit after the first rivet and say okay should I go up a size or can I get away with it and just be careful and make sure I do not exceed my limits so in my case I was very careful with the squeezer and I was directly perpendicular on the uh, on the rivet so I can get that flat hat and so forth but the interesting question that came in that day is because I mentioned I have the squeezer set to rivet these two pieces which are thin then when I went to rivet one thick and one thin I said on the video I have to reset my squeezer to, ac to accommodate the thicker material so uh, one gentleman who is very smart and very, uh, very sharp caught that in the middle of all of this it says it is a 4-4 rivet why do you have to reset it it is your squeezer is set for a 4-4 well 
it is that is not the case because now with the thicker material you have less material of the rivet sticking out so if we will assume the two thin materials when they were together they were covering it up to here now when I used it on a thicker material it's up to here so I have less length to play with here so when I squeeze that I am going to barely achieve the diameter and the height of that if I had this whole length yes I'll be able to achieve that but with some of that sunk inside the hole now because the material is thicker I have a little less material to play with and I have to be really careful as a matter of fact that is what we were talking about a minute ago and I barely made it and I was very careful and I measured every single rivet so not because you're squeezing the same type of rivet even the same length of rivet you don't have to reset your squeezer if the material is different you have to readjust your squeezer and how far it's squeezed to achieve the rivet chop head that you need another important thing to keep in mind when you are riveting two pieces of material together they have to be laying on top of each other touching each other completely reason have it we'll assume that this is the two materials right here and you have a rivet that goes right through it if they are separated if there is a, a place in there open between it and you have a solid surface here and you're squeezing from here as I mentioned before the whole shank diameter gets bigger and what happens in that empty space right here nothing is holding it from getting bigger so it gets bigger here then on top here so it will make a shop head here and a semi shop head here and this will stay separated forever till you drill it up so when you're riveting something make sure the surfaces are touching that's why we use clicos but clicos are not foolproof sometimes there is a separation there especially because you have to take the clico out to put the rivet in and if you look at this rib for instance here this have one hole here one hole there one hole there now if you're holding this with a clico and this one with a clico and this one with a clico so you take the clico out of this one the top one so you can put a rivet in there that is separate from that one so if that one is bent a little bit this clico is not gonna make it <laughs> lay flat so before you rivet it you have to make sure that it is laying but it's not laying flat you're gonna have to take it out and do something and you need to check that before you start riveting because if you rivet all three of those and this one doesn't lay flat now you have a problem now you need somebody to hold it flat while you rivet that so it, it's an issue before you start riveting make sure that the surface are laying flush flat with each other one more time I would like to emphasize the fact that the size of the hole matters it makes a huge difference in the quality of the rivet that you are bucking or you're squeezing so if the hole gets 
too big from you you're not going to be able to get the rivet head size unless the rivet itself was longer than required to begin with so be careful with the size of the hole if it calls for number 40 I, me personally I, I have a reamer a 0 0.095 reamer that found to be very helpful and at the very beginning of the build I ordered one that's carbide so it would last me throughout the build so when I drill the hole or I have an existing hole that's a 3 30 seconds that reamer is just a little over a thousand bigger than that hole which is enough to clear the hole when I am dimpling that skin so when it starts at 0 0.095 and dimple it I wind up with a hole that's 0.1 zero one or point one zero two max not that's a decent size hole to work with so having said that be careful while you're dimpling and while you're final drilling or match drilling be really careful use a caliper to kind of forecast what you're getting into it's a you can buy this for 20 bucks from harbor freight or something and it's very accurate it's not it's not bad at all and uh to to, to be able to, to see what's happening when you when you do final drilling and when you dimple especially after i advise you please measure the holes after you do the first dimple if you're dimpling a skin you set up you dimple the skin you want to look at the quality of the dimple and you want to measure it to see what size hole that you got from that dimple folks I have been talking to you as a friend that's why it took so long I wanted to make sure that I deliver this message uh, clearly and if the number if I went a little bit too fast with the numbers uh, you might want to see the video again kind of study these numbers because this is and I intentionally use the numbers that you are going to be using so you need to keep those in the back of your mind I'm sorry I took so long explaining this um, I hope it benefits someone out there and for those of you who have purchased our riveting and dimpling systems I hope uh, it made a difference I'm sure it did it would it, it did make a lot of uh, difference in people's lives and how fast uh, they can uh, achieve their goal in building the airplane and how beautiful it is because of the consistency of the dimple and the riveting especially on the stiffeners and so forth uh, gives you a beautiful surface on the uh, on any surface that you uh, rivet or you dimple and thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time